Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Salami Talk podcast. It's your boy, John, a.k.a. Salami Lube. And I just want to say out there, happy fucking 4th of July, everybody. We're recording this on the fucking 4th, dude. Happy Independence Day, bro. Fuck yeah, America. We're fucking kicking ass out here. You know, fuck it. Come fuck with us. Fuck Europe. So, other than that, man, thank you guys for tuning into the podcast. Um, make sure you check out all my other stuff that I have on my channel for you guys. Let's keep the sub count going up. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, without further ado, we're going to kick it off with going through the top 10 most badass people in American history. So... Let's just do that just to show how much of badass America is. We're just going to do that. And starting it off at number 10, we got Teddy Roosevelt, bro. Uh, this guy is a pretty big badass, man. Apparently, he um, he uh, he wrote some books. So that's pretty badass. Apparently, he says right here that he, used to, he became a deputy. And he used to uh, capture bandits uh, who stole... Um, who stole stuff apparently in uh in Dakota because I guess that's where he's from and he would bring him back. He was like a bounty hunter, bro. Not to mention he took a badass picture of him sitting on a moose, so that was pretty cool. I feel like that photo's photoshopped though. Let's see what else here is. Audie Murphy, the uh, the greatest American shoulder, uh, uh, the greatest American soldier of all time was five five and one hundred and ten pounds. You hear that, uh, short kings? This was pre-Super Soldier Serum, bro. We're out here. What did this guy do? He was 3rd Division U.S. Infantry in the Army. Uh, he singly-handedly destroyed a tank. Oh, my God. Audie Murphy, bro. Hell yeah, bro. What a badass, dude. What, did, what else did he do? He got separated from his unit. And they came across him and a, and a comrade, fellow comrade in war came across came across a uh, a German machine gun nest waving the white flag but instead of surrendering the Germans open fired killing Murphy's friend so this guy went berserk charged the nest and killed every Nazi in it fuck yeah dude I think I think that's enough said about uh <laughs> about fucking Audie Murphy bro who's Jesse Owens for winning four gold medals in the Olympics uh, winning them in the summer of 1939 in Berlin while Adolf Hitler is preaching the physical superiority of the Aryan race. Well, that's pretty badass uh, to win that. Uh, not only did Jesse Owens invalidate Hitler's ideology and humiliate the Nazi leader of his own country, he did it without any recognition from his own president. Damn, bro. That's, uh, that's pretty sad. That's pretty badass, bro, just sticking it to Hitler, though. I mean, I guess this guy was Jewish. Or woman. I don't know if it's a he or she. Oh, it's a he. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, Jesse Owens, bro. Badass. Made Hitler look like a fool. Who else is sitting here? Who else is in there? Oh, here we go. Arnold Schwarzenegger. The the Terminator. Yeah, America did give us the Terminator. I mean, technically German. German uh, Germany did, but, you know. Uh, or uh, Aust Austrian? Austrian? Yeah, isn't that in? Let me know if Arnold Schwarzenegger is um, German or not, because I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure on it. Let us know in the comments below. Um, wait, he was in the. He was in the in the in the army. Terminator, born to a poor Austrian family, forty seven, to move to the United States at the age of ten when he finally got to America, twenty one. Oh, he was in, he, oh, oh, wow. He was mandatory in the Austrian military and he went AWOL and he crashed the tank going AWOL. Oh, wow. And then he came here and, you know, had the greatest launching Hollywood career I can ever, dude, no way, bro. He grossed, he had $1.7 billion. He grossed $1.7 billion before becoming like a Hollywood actor. Oh my God! Shout out Arnold Schwarzenegger, bro. That dude is just jaw. Andrew Jackson, the second U.S. leader on this is Andrew Jackson, the poster boy. Isn't that the dude that's on the twenty dollar bill? What did he do? Jackson spent his life with two middle fingers proudly raised to most people in power. Pretty badass. Saying fuck you to the man. 
Oh, he got shot. The bullet struck Jackson's chest, which apparently didn't do much to hurt him because the future president took his time, aimed and killed the man. Why did he get shot, though? He loved dueling. Oh, he let his opponent shoot first during the duel. Wow, that's pretty badass. Come hither. Why is Bill Murray? Okay, Bill Murray's on this list. America, freedom, liberty, extra freedom, hamburgers served between a sliced donut. Bill Murray does better than anyone else. Isn't this the dude? Wasn't he in, uh, isn't Bill Murray in uh, Ghostbusters? He was. He is the definition of badass because he was a, he's a pretty badass in Ghostbusters. You see, you see how cool America is. Like people don't realize how cool America is. I mean, yeah, we have we have our issues and stuff like that. I mean, you know, obviously I didn't read all ten of these people, but I mean, yeah, like America, bro. Like we fought for this country and we fucking love it, bro. Like it, we can do basically whatever we want here as long as we're not like breaking the law. But, uh, you know, like, America Pride all the way, bro. Happy 4th. Um, you know, shout out if you're setting off fireworks, bro. Be safe. Uh, shout out to the fireworks. We're about a, we, my family and I, we purchased an insane amount of fireworks. So, we're going to be that guy that, or we're going to be that family that's keeping you up at, like, 11 o'clock because we're just blowing up fucking fireworks. And that's the reason your dog is, like, running around in a circle. So, sorry. It's a, it's hoorah day. Shout out to all the armed services out there, bro. People that served in the military, Marines, Navy. Shout out, bro. Air Force, shout out, Logan. You are serving in Alaska right now, bro. And if you're seeing this, I still want my fucking moose. So, yeah, I hope everybody's uh, week is going by. I hope everyone's going to have a great holiday. Um, I just paid off my car. So, your boy is officially debt-free. So, let's fucking go, bro. Making big moves out here. Um... You know, life's been uh, pretty good recently, man. You know, uh, can't really complain. Life has been great. Um, you know what isn't great, though? How I got fooled into buying the wrong RAM for my PC. And now I had to buy new RAM and return the old RAM. And I felt like a complete kerplunk when I did that. So, you know, um, that is all hunky-dory. But we, we have rectified that issue, to say the least. And, yeah. So, big big thing I want to acknowledge is that Oppenheimer and uh, the Barbie movie come out on the same day. So, you know, that's going to be interesting when we're watching Barbie and then the next theater next to us just decides to fucking explode and we get nailed with radiation and shrapnel and, like, just get our fucking whole face melted off. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw the trailer for Oppenheimer, but they have somebody playing, uh, what is it, uh, Albert Einstein because of the Manhattan Project. And, bro, everyone freaked out. I saw a clip of it on TikTok. Everyone freaked out when they saw Albert Einstein in the movie. They were, like, freaking out. It was uh, pretty interesting to see. But, uh, you know, I guess Albert Einstein is, uh, you know, I know Albert Einstein's, like, super smart. But I never really knew what he, like, actually, like, like, what the big thing is he did. What are the three things that Albert Einstein is best known for? Uh, on his quantum theory of light, that light is a particle or photon on the existence of atoms. Okay, so this guy discovered atoms. That's pretty cool. Uh, on this theory of, on his theory of special relativity, r- relative, re- I can't even pronounce that. I'm, I'm fucking stupid. That length and time are not fixed and depend on the observer's frame of reference. Hmm. Interesting. Uh. What is quantum theory? I want to... I want to... We're doing big nerd on this. What is... Quantum... Theory. Here we go. What is quantum theory? Oh, boy. The understanding, quantum mechanics, science dealing with the behavior of matter and light on the atomic and subatomic scale. It attempts to describe and account for the properties of molecules and atoms and their constituents, electrons, protons, and neutrons, and other more esoteric particles such as quarks and glue. I'm sorry, what are these words, man? So what's the basis of quantum theory? 
quantum physics is the study of matter and energy at the most fundamental level. It aims to uncover the properties and behaviors of the very building blocks of nature. While many quantum experiments examine very small objects such as electrons and photons, quantum ph phenomena are all around us acting on every scale. Listen, man, if quantum mechanics and quantum theory and like, all I'm going to say is if the quantum realm from the MCU is like an actual thing and like we are just so oblivious to it and we don't know how to access to it. We are literally just like so dumb comparing to other things that are going on in earth. Like literally like, do you ever get, do you ever get in that feeling that like we are so like, we think we're so smart, but we're actually not. And that there's a higher life out there and they are just looking down at us calling us stupid and that we're morons and that we're actually just so dumb because they have just found the like the key to higher technology and everything like that and we just haven't done it yet because we are too busy arguing with ourselves and we are just so like immature and insecure and worried and scared about certain things about each other like we can't even cohabitate with each other so we're just we can't even focus on other things at hand like from a scientific standpoint you know it's kind of scary at that because like I mean, let's just face it, guys. Aliens are real. Like, we haven't talked about aliens in a while in this podcast, so we're going to bring it back. Happy 4th. So, yeah, man, aliens are 100% real. Like, I was talk I forget who I was talking to, but they literally looked at me and they were like, aliens are not real. And I looked at them and I said, you're honestly fucking stupid. Like, you don't understand that, like, our universe is so fucking huge. Like, it would take a whole lifetime or two, like two lifetimes of an average human life just to reach Mars. And like the universe is huge and it's constantly expanding. So you're going to tell me that throughout this whole universe that we're the only one on a planet that can breathe and like talk and do all this shit? No. No, there's pictures out there that confirm alien life. Listen, man. I, I don't understand how the pyramids were made, okay? Because literally the pyramids, I, so what, like the Egypt, the Egyptians people, right? Isn't that how it works? So like, let's see how the pyramids were made. I'm pretty sure the Egyptians like enslaved a bunch of Jewish people, whoopsie poopsies. And, you know, they were like, you know, we're going to build this fucking triangle and use it as a multiple tombs and stuff like that, right? So how were the pyramids built? Okay, so... The most plausible one is that the Egyptians employed a sloping and encircling embankment of brick, earth, and sand, which was increased in height and length as the pyramid rose. Stone blocks were hauled up the ramp by means of sledges, rollers, and levers. Okay. So they just, they obviously got a shit ton of slaves, and they, like, rolled this thing up, and... That doesn't make sense. Hang on. So they're rolling it up. They're rolling it up and then they're like placing it in certain spots, I assume. While there was little work to be done in the fields when the Nile River was in flood, by the late 20th century, archaeologists had found evidence that a more limited workforce may have been occupied the site on a permanent rather than seasonal bait. Okay, that just... I don't, that's just a whole fucking bunch of junk. So, okay, so they, essentially they're just hauling shit up this ramp and they're like, it's like a kind of like a conveyor belt and then they can place it and they kind of just stack it on top of each other until they make like the point or whatnot. And obviously like they did this on a grand scheme of things because, you know, they had a whole bunch of slaves and yada yada. But like, I mean, if you, I've never been to like Giza or Egypt in general because like no I'm good and but apparently they're huge like the pyramids are fucking massive like if they're as big as I've seen them in Moon Knight then they're pretty fucking big and for the time that like they had no heavy machinery they had like do you do you guys see how long it takes just to like put a road through 
like anywhere like if you live by me like we're expanding roads okay do you see how long it's taking just to like expand the road like i mean it takes like maybe like a couple months to expand the road and that's with all the modern day fucking technology that we have a couple months so like these guys have nothing like the egyptians have nothing so how how did they build that when all they had was literally just manpower and like i don't think they enslaved like all of the Jews, like all the Jewish people, all the people from like Israel, all the, I don't know if they've enslaved other people, but you know, they, they, they slaved, they enslaved a lot of people and that's like a big no, no, but you know, they, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Now the reason I bring this up is because I 100% believe that aliens help build the pyramids. And if you don't agree with me on that, then honestly, like, bro, take a look at Mike Mayan temples and like Aztec people, don't you find it odd that they just disappeared like in one, like one day, one day they just disappeared, vanished, gone, gone, gone. It's so weird. I mean, obviously with Egypt, I think it's different because I think Rome came in and like took over. I don't know. Cause the amount, yeah. So, but yeah, aliens are real. Like there's no doubt about it. And they have been helping people, they have been helping human civilizations for a while now. And, uh, I feel like now, now I feel like we, now that we have come to like, like having like a government democracy for the people and everything like that, thanks to the 4th of July, where we declared our independence from Great Britain. So, uh, fuck you, laddie. Oh, that's Irish. So anyway, um, you know, we, we declared that from them and we're independent now. And we have what we have now is America, you know, great, great old America. You know, we're letting everyone in at the fucking border and, you know, but we're, you know, whatever. But, you know, it is hoorah because, you know, we, we are, you do not fuck with us, bro. USA, USA, bro. So we, uh, I feel like we have a secret, uh, like contract with alien life and in exchange for us to like, co-live with uh aliens and you know like have them be secretive and not really like you know are like we're not really like we don't mess with them they don't mess with us like kind of like a treaty uh every year like they abduct like two or three people and uh we just turn the fattest blind eye to it that we can possibly do i i genuinely feel like that is a, a real thing that we do in america and uh you know i'm sorry but like if you, like, I think it's kind of odd that, like, we can't go into Area 51. Like, you know, I remember, like, a couple years ago, they had the whole thing where they showed up at Area 51. But, like, um, you know, an unidentified flying object flew into Area 51, allegedly, allegedly. And, you know, they have, uh, they, they just, like, what, kept it on ice? And now it's just sitting there? And... Like, what happens if you think someone were to expose it? Like, I mean, what do they, they have, like, a death wish coming out at them? Like, a contract? Is there, like, a killer contract out there? You know what? Since we're on America, you know what the greatest thing about America is? Obviously, besides, like, having this weird, uh, like, secret alliance with alien life. Or maybe I'm just really, really going into, like, my tinfoil hat era right now. Is uh, we have a pretty badass military, man. So shout out, like I said, shout out to everybody that's in, uh, you know, the military. Thank you for your service. You guys are awesome. Um, but um, let's look up the most badass military weapons. The most awesome military weapons. Top 30 coolest military weapons. Okay. Number one, this is the... What is this? So this is number one. Oh, it's an Iron Man. Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit, a.k.a. Talos. We told you Tony would be interested in Talos, our nickname the Iron Man Suit, because they are robotic exoskeletons for troops on the battlefield. The idea is that the exoskeleton will allow troops to absorb bullets, negate fire... And bypass darkness. It also provides them with critical readings of their vitals. 
Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's like you're like just armored the hell out. And okay, that's cool. I mean, obviously this isn't like, I don't think this is real. I think this is like a test thing. Can you imagine if we had this yet? But that's pretty good. This I know we have. Number two is rail guns. Capable of firing objects at Mach 8. 5,000 miles per hour. Dude, that would split you in half, like without a doubt. We're initially developed railguns were initially developed to help protect warships. This was to be used to fire at enemies, defend against missiles, shoot down aircraft, and more, including on the offensive to hit battlefields. Sadly, after a decade and tons of money, the oh it was scrapped. No way, bro. They're in battlefield. How are they scrapped? Well, that's how you know how trash I am when I got to compare like what I see in video games into what the military actually has. What is this called? This is called a rod from God. Tugsten is one of the heaviest metals known to man. Gravity makes things fall. The weapon's idea was to make a telephone pole-sized piece of tugsten and drop it from space to hit its targets. At least that's the idea, but the logistics of creating this weapon, reloading it, and then somehow making sure it hits the target instead of make of murking some innocents are all major. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. This is ridiculous. Oh, these are just like, do we, I don't want to hear about the ones that we don't have. Okay. Here's one. Tens that actually exist. Phaser. What's this? Phaser. A lethal weapon. Oh, it's a personnel halting and stimulation response rifle. A non-lethal weapon designed to st uh, disorient and stun enemies. A light base a light based gun. Oh, so we're just flashing it, it so like this is like a flashbang gun phaser. Wow, it even The police are gonna have this? Holy shit. A golf ball grenade. I mean that's pretty self explanatory. Let's see what number one is. A digital revolver. Oh jeez. Quantum stealth. These sounds so cool. Oh, there's the operator suit that we just saw. Sentient unmanned vehicles. Oh, like the Terminator. Oh God, we don't need that. We do not need. That. Right, here's number one. Of. It's called a vomit gun. The sticks would cause anyone they touch to instantly vomit. Believe it or not, a real-life vomit gun has been invented in 2007. The Navy signed a contract with a company called Invocon to develop a weapon that uses radio frequency to impact a person's sense of hearing and equilibrium. Anyone hit by a vomit gun immediately experiences severe motion sickness and throws up. At the same time, the Department of Homeland Security and Technology Department engaged a company called Intel... Intelligent optical systems that develop an LED incapacitator, incapacitor, incapacitor, incapacitator, incapacitator. Okay, I said it right, guys. That emits a rapid pulse of different colored lights to cause dizziness, headaches, and vom vom vomiting as well. As with other weapons, I cannot talk. As other, uh, as with other weapons on this list, the vomit gun is viewed as non-lethal means of subduing people and gaining their upper hand. Okay, I, <laughs> I feel like the military now is just doing whatever the fuck they feel like they want to, bro. Like this is a ridiculous weapon. Like we're gonna make a gun that you can just shoot at people and it immediately makes them just barf. Like that is so. Why? Why would you do that? What? Like we don't need that. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, you just point a gun at somebody, you're like, hey, man, give me all of your money or you're going to throw up. I'm not giving you everything. Kapoo. <laughs> like, that, I'd get shot by that. I feel like I could take it. I could take the vomit gun. I wouldn't throw up. I'm just built different, bro. Uh, all right, so I want to do Are They Mid because we have uh, Uzi dropped his album. 
he dropped the pink tape. I'll be the one to say it, man. Let me before I give my answer. I'm gonna say this for the fans out there, for the TikTok reels, for everyone out there. How are we feeling about Uzi's pink tape? Is the pink tape mid? Let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know your your yeah. Let me know all your responses and everything like that. I'll read them and I'll respond to them as well. So just let me know is the pink tape mid or not? Just let me know. And uh, I'm about to give you guys my answer. And the answer is, yeah, dude, I think this album's fucking mid as hell. And I'm honestly really sad about how Uzi came out with this album, bro. Like, I I actually like Lil Uzi Vert a lot. Like, I think he's an interesting artist in the rap, like, community, hip-hop community. And, um, you know, he's put out some projects, like, from, like, all the way from Lil Uzi Vert versus The World to... Uh, you know, what's the one he came out with? The, like, uh, Eternal, right? Isn't that the one that he came out with? Eternal or something like that? Let me look at his discography because I know them. I'm just having a complete brain fart right now. So he had the fixed name. Yeah, Eternal A Take. You know, Love Is Rage. Love Is Rage 2. Like, those albums, bro, like, those are, like, iconic Uzi albums, in my opinion, bro. At least Love Is Rage 1 and 2 are. You know, and then we have the collab album with him, Pluto Baby. X Baby Pluto with Future that out al- that album's great too man that's that's a really slept on album and yeah like like I mean like he Love Is Rage Lil Uzi Vert versus the World the Perfect Love Tape Love Is Rage Two Eternal A Take I mean th- those are all like fucking slappers dude like I mean you can't deny that I mean like yeah like I mean when you listen to them they get kind of repetitive in a way but like even with that like I mean it's just the nostalgia factor and everything like it's just so good. And then he dropped a pink tape, man. And, like, honestly, dude, I feel like he's trying to put, like, everybody's trying to push this, like, UK drill type rap. And, like, I heard that on some of his songs. And then I, some of, like, his songs, too. Like, I, I gently, like, listen, I love hip hop. Like, hip hop's, like, my favorite genre of music. And, like, people say, like, mumble rap is, like, whack and whatnot. And I mean, like, I get it. Like, people aren't going to like it. Yada, yada. A lot of people do it. And, like, you know, it's like just a different style of rap, I guess. And it's just not for everybody. But like Uzi kind of was like with the Playboy Cardi of the world. He came with like a lot of artists that were coming up at the time doing that kind of style. And like you, you kind of notice like as he's going through, like if you listen to each album and you go through it all, you can honestly hear how, like how it kind of molded into something different each time, whether it be like the flow on the beat the lyrics, the beats of themselves, like everything changed. But with this specific album, bro, like I, I do not like, like this drill fucking thing. Like pop smoke did it, bro. And now everybody's trying to be like pop smoke. And now everybody's trying to be like ice spice. And it's just like, guys, just stop, please. Like, I mean, please, can we see more creativity? I'm sick of hearing like this UK drill, drill music. It's not like, I mean, obviously me saying this isn't going to change anything, but I'm just saying it like, I mean, like Dante said it best, bro. Shout out Dante. He said, everyone sounds like fucking Batman. And I mean, they're not wrong. And there's people out there that are literally trying to sound like Pop Smoke. And I mean, like, I mean, yeah, great influence on the hip hop community, but there's people that are actually trying to literally like become Pop Smoke, like verbatim, like try to become him. And that's why with me and Drill, like, it just doesn't sit right. And specifically with Uzi, too, like, Drill with Uzi just doesn't sound good at all to me. Like, it just does not, like, that's not him, bro. Like, when I think of Uzi, I'm thinking of, like, the anime fucking, like, type beat, like, the feel-good type beat, like, the beat that just makes you happy, the beat that, like, literally transcends you into a whole other realm when you're like smoking weed taking drugs or just vibing in your room bro like like it's just that he's like that he's like a psychedelic rapper like literally like i mean even like like from the music videos he has out like his whole persona look i've never met him he seems like a really cool dude like i would love to meet this guy but like honestly bro like i feel like the pink tape just isn't it man and i mean like hey you tried it it went out like and like cool bro like i mean like fuck it like want to try something new fuck it but like dude i am just not feeling the pink tape bro like love is rage eternal take bro and all those ones are great keep them 
you literally just stapled those in the hip hop. Like, like you literally like, like, bro, where's the Cardi and Uzi collab album, bro? That's what I'm waiting for. Like, we need that in our life. But I mean, yeah, like, I mean, like, I just don't find it that good. Like, I'd probably give it like a four. Like, it's not that good to me. Like, it's cool. And you tried something new and you experimented. And I mean, cool. But like, it's just not that good to me. But let me know what you guys think. If it's uh, if it's mid or not. I've been talking a lot about Uzi and America and all this shit. So we're going to detour from that. And we're going to go trending on Twitter for a little bit. Oh, man, this one is this one's for me, bro. Best excuse to take off a day off. Let's see this. Shout out to everybody. The, shout out to everybody that needs to take a day off, bro. Just call off. The first five days after the weekend are the hardest. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to tell me that again, man. Dude, honestly, like, if you just need to call off work, just tell them that, like, your mom died or something. Like, they can't tell you mm-hmm. no after that. Number one thing. Let's see what's trending in the news. Nope. Let's go to sports. Nope. Entertainment. Let's see what's going on. Civil War is trending. That's interesting. Why is Young Money trending? A Young Money interview from 2009. Where's a... Young Money, bro. I remember when they were coming out, man, and they were popping off. Tyga and all them were in Young Money, man. Who are the members of Young Money? I'm curious. Let's see who the members... Of Young. All right, so these are the members of Young Money members. We have Chanel. Chanel, if I'm saying that right. We've Gutta Gutta. Lil Chucky. All right, Lil Chucky. Nicki Minaj. Lil Twist. Chanel West Coast apparently was a part of Young Money. Interesting. Uh, Mac Main. Jay Mills. Uh, Honey Cocaine. Wow, these are interesting names. Uh, Drake, Corey Guns, Tyga, uh, Christina Milan, Short Dog, Lil Wayne, T Streets, Euro, and PG Morton. You know, it's interesting to say that like a solid like five people out of this whole group got like pretty big. Like Nicki Minaj. The queen, bro. Queen, queen out there. Did it before every, did it before everybody, bro. I can't change my mind. Nicki Minaj is on top of the game. Uh, and she will perp, like, just stapled there. Like, she did it before anyone else. She's huge. Uh, like, I mean, Chanel West Coast is pretty big. Like, I, I feel like without ridiculousness, she probably wouldn't be as big as we are in, like, Fantasy Factory and all that. Damn, we're going to go back on a memory lane in a minute about, like, MTV. Drake, you know, huge. Wayne, Tucci, huge. Uh, Tyga, Huge for a little bit, fell off on the come up a little bit. But yeah, like literally like that's five people. So out of this whole group, only five people blew up and everyone else is like, and Corey Guns, I mean, you could technically say he blew up, but like if it weren't for six foot, seven foot, I feel like no one would really know who Corey Guns is. No shot at Corey Guns, but like, you know, Corey Guns. But yeah, that picture of Chanel West Coast I saw just brought back like so many memories. Like guys, they're canceling MTV. Like, like, cause uh, something like what Paramount Plus, bro. Like MTV's done. So, like the MTV era that I grew up in. Like I'm 23, and the MTV era that I saw growing up is gone. So like ridiculousness is gonna go away. Uh, fa- like Fantasy Factory. I mean, Fantasy Factory was already kind of gone, but I mean that that's gone. Wild Boys is gone. Jackass is gone. Uh, what else was on MTV? Uh, Jersey Shore is is gone. Um. What's the other one? Isn't 16 and Pregnant? Gone. Uh, Teen Mom? Gone. Uh, Pimp My Ride? Gone. Like, what are the, like, I'm, there's more I'm thinking of right now, but I can't, I can't just think of it. Iconic MTV uh, shows. Here we go. Because I remember, all right, here's the the best like sh- like y'all like MTV bro like I mean you guys were so cool bro like I like bro like those shirts dude like if I could just get a shirt that says MTV and it's like white and it just has like the MTV logo on it bro like those are so cool like that logo is so fucking sick like dude the people that made MTV music television are probably like b- loaded like I feel like MTV was like a huge huge thing for like early television right so. 
Here we go. Here's the first one. Oh, that's cool, man. The fucking screen just froze. Sweet. Sweet. Epic. Hang on, guys. Technical difficulties. We gotta fix this again. This TV, I just paid this TV off and it fucking does this all the time. Here we go. All right, I fixed it. So we had the shows up. What's this? Total Request Live. TRL. Popular uh, MTV's extremely popular music video countdown series. That I don't know. That I don't remember. Daria. That's just a spinoff from Beavis and Butthead, bro. And Beavis and Butthead, bro. That's one that's on uh, MTV, I'm pretty sure. So, like, bro. MTV Crit. Oh, my God, dude. MTV Cribs, dude. Do you remember that show, bro? Like, high key probably fake like because like they would just go in the random houses that i think were super nice and just follow them around but mtv cribs bro like i remember that show i remember the the parody that they would do like they did red man's crib that was like a bullshit ass apartment it was like dirty and then they did the jackass cribs and one of the guys from jackass was literally living out of his car and like that was like his crib i thought that was so funny true life Real life deceptions of both heavy and light head subject matter. I don't remember that show. Celebrity death match, bro. Holy shit, dude. I remember staying up and watching that, bro. They actually, uh, if you guys don't know where uh, celebrity death match is, dude, it was basically like a, it was like a claymation thing of like uh, famous people, like celebrities, and they would fight in like a wrestling ring. And it was just super funny, bro. I thought it was like super, super, uh, like it was like super just funny. And they would use like guns and shit and like like swords and stuff. And it was previous. It was pretty funny. It's the Ice Cube versus Ice T, Ben Affleck versus Matt Damon, Backstreet Boys versus In Sync. Yeah, it was like pretty. It was pretty funny though. You know, like it was pretty funny. Yeah, like here I just said Jackass, dude. Like, like iconic, bro. Movies about it. The Real World. I don't know what that is. The real world, which detates seven to eight young adults who are picked to temporarily live together in a new city and residence. This social experiment series was held earlier on TV for the depicting contemporary issues. That's a weird show. Here it is, Beavis and Butthead, bro. Like, gone, dude. That Dude, Beavis and Butthead, bro. Like, that, that show takes, like, comedy, like, comedy to a whole other level bro like that is just such a funny fucking cartoon to watch and i love cartoons dude so beavis and butthead is like like i have a i have it on dvd somewhere in here because it's that fucking funny like like i'm just gonna like all right the bet i there's so many scenes i've seen from beavis and butthead but i think the one that literally lives in my head that's rent free is when he uh Beavis has a fucking, like, he has an action figure in his hand. And then for some unknown reason, dude, Butthead comes up out of nowhere and just drills a screw into his, like, his hand. And now he's stuck like this with the fucking action figure in his hand. And it's just, it's so funny, dude. Like, I I, I laugh so hard at that. Or, like, when they try to play catch with a trash can, making the video... Fans of their favorite music sensations. Oh, I guess that was just like a behind the scenes thing. Punked, dude. Punked was a big. I never really watched Punk, but I've always heard about how big it was. That's a that made a Ashton. I mean, Ashton Kutcher was kind of big on that because he was already doing like I think uh uh that '70s show and shit. Bastion Kutcher on Punk was pretty big. They would always prank celebrities and shit. And then they had Andrew Santino fill in for like, I think like the f- the fifth or fourth season of it or something like that. And then he was the host. And that, what's this? MTV Unplugged showcase iconic acoustics performance by some of the music industry's bright and most talented. Okay. You know what I really remember, bro, from what I've seen with MTV? RIP MTV though, bro. Like literally, like, are, am I wrong? I don't know. But I just saw a thing that said MTV is like shutting down and it's, it's sad, bro, because MTV was a huge part of my life. And, yeah, but what I remember is I remember seeing uh, 
like MTV hits and it would be like all the music videos that were out right now, like during my time, you know, early 2000s, baby, you know how it is, bro. You know, like Britney Spears and shit, Eminem, 50 Cent, fucking Ja Rule, Lil Wayne. You get the picture, bro. And I remember just sitting there, bro, like on my fucking computer, bro, in the, in the, when I lived in a house, bro, there was just a computer there that we had. It was like the family computer. There's only one in the house. We only had one computer in the house. Like a, and it was like a fucking like ugly ass computer too, bro. It was like a, it looked like a fucking brick. And I remember just sitting there like watching music videos on YouTube, like early YouTube or like the TV I had in my room, like the box TV. I remember watching all the like MTV hits and it'd be like a comp- uh, compilation of all the music videos that are out right now. And then they do like uh, MTV, uh, hits uh, like uh, marathons for artists so they'd have like 50 cent marathons Eminem marathons like Drake marathons Nicki Minaj marathons and it was just a whole bunch of music videos of them and just like interviews and shit like I thought that was so cool and then they had MTV like OG MTV then they had MTV2 with the two dogs bro guy code on that was hilarious bro guy code was so funny that show literally made like 2012 like like peak like, that was, like, my peak show in 2012 was fucking just watching Guy Code. That shit was so funny. That shit was so fucking funny. Like, Andrew, Andrew, uh, Andrew Schultz was on that, bro. Krista Stefano, bro. These people I listen to on podcasts all the time. These are, like, probably, like, my favorite comedians I've seen, dude. Like, Dan Scheuer was on there. Uh, Charlemagne and Lil Duval, bro. Like, just, like, iconic shit, dude. MTV has just been, like, I feel like for people that are my age, and you've watched MTV growing up, and like now you just see it like it's canceling, which I mean isn't really a bit. I mean it's sad, but like most of the shit you can watch, I'm pretty sure is on Paramount Plus if you have that subscription. But I mean it's so sad to see something like that go. Like just the nostalgic factor of like fucking life, dude. Like holy shit, I've been talking about MTV too much, bro. I'm going into my feels. So uh, yeah, bro. Like what's going on here, dude? Ten likes and I'll do it. Text y'all, man. Condom right, and it posts his reply. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I don't know. I'd just be saying shit. Who is this? Who's, I don't know. I'd just be, all right, let's see some of your tweets. This is coming from the tweet, from the Twitter page. Uh, I don't know. I'd just be saying shit. Sexy Sagittarius. Me daydreaming about getting my pussy A. Whoa. Whoa, that took a left turn. Elon Musk should have been on the submarine. Damn, bro. That's, that is, uh, that is, damn, bro. What did Elon do, bro? <laughs> what the fuck? If I'm pregnant today, best believe that baby be gone tonight, dude. Oh, man. This is a interesting, interesting Twitter page to read, bro. I be at work just on Twitter, so basically I get paid to tweet. Fuck it. I be twerking everywhere, the couch, my bed, the kitchen, the shower. Yeah, you're cool, man, twerking in the kitchen, bro. Do you, what has society come to? Like, twerking in the kitchen. I can twerk in the kitchen. I can't get shit done in the kitchen if I'm twerking. I can't cook. I can't multitask. I can't clap my ass. Sorry, I can't clap my ass and fucking make eggs and rice at the same time, guys. Sorry, I'm not built different. You know, but I can take a shot from the fucking vomit gun that we saw earlier, bro. What else is, what is this? Pop tings. Taylor Swift has already been fined 32 times for disposing of, ru- <laughs> for disposing of rubbish in front of her NY home. How are you getting fined for disposing of, of, I assume that's trash. According to NY Post, there are cigarette packs, stacks of newspaper, liquor bottles, cardboard boxes, and ashtrays scattered on the side. Jesus, Taylor, what the fuck, bro? She's living like Post Malone, bro. Oh, man. Let's... What are we at? 45? Let's hop on No Jumper's page and see what's popping on No Jumper before we hop out of here. Let's see what's popping. 
I show speed, lit some fireworks in his room, dude. He did this last year, bro. Shout out Speed, though. Speed's pretty funny. Sexy Red. Oh, here we go. Dude, dude she has been everywhere, bro. Sexy Red, bro. Is, dude. All right, bro. First, she complained about Pound Town. Then, right? Isn't that what she did? She complained about... Uh, oh, first, it was her driver's license. She couldn't get her... She just got her driver's license. All right? And then she was complaining about it at the BET Awards and someone like carpet bombed her and farted in her face. Now she gets mad at a fan for throwing money at her while performing. Let me see. Did it hit her right in, a, in the face? Where's the money? Come on. Oh, bro. Damn, bro. That hit her right in the back of the head. Oh, she's pissed. Boozy unhappy with Koi Roy's album sales. Koi Roy slept on, bro. Koi Roy's fire. Her album's fire. Oh, yo. <laughs> oh, my God. Rick Ross's knees gave out during his dive attempt, bro. Oh, man, dude. R.I.P. Rick Ross, dude. That's so embarrassing, bro. <laughs> dude, he literally, like... It looked like his knee, like, fell, like... Can you imagine if his knee just, like, dislocated? Oh, let's see. Look, here we go. We're just talking about Young Money, bro. Lil Wayne shows off his dance moves. Tunchi, bro. Kicking it off. Let's see how he's dancing, dude. First off, gotta respect the drip, bro. This pink fit that you got on Tucci, fire. Oh, Megan Thee Stallion, turn it up. I had uh, another thing, bro. There it goes, bro. She's throwing ass three ways, bro. Shout out Megan, dude. Shout out Megan, bro. Comment if you'd smell Megan Thee Stallion's fart. Kai Sinat remakes his viral picture with his Aunt Kathy. Oh, that's sweet. Kai looks like a gem of a person, bro. Like, he genuinely looks like a gem of a person. Man exposes amusement park ride for having giant crack in the support the roller coaster. Oh, yo, that is, that is no bueno, bro. That is, I mean, that could be like, I don't know. That looks like a, a crack to me, man. Yada yada, Sweetie shows off her birthday outfit. Bro, what happened to Sweetie, dude? She has not been dropping music. She has uh, just been doing whatever the fuck she's doing, bro. Have you guys seen like the shit she eats, bro? Because I heard she eats like, like, at least, like, I don't know if it's true, like, I mean, but I heard she eats, like, trash, dude. Like, she eats, like, like, horrible, like, food. Bro. Dude, yeah, look at this, dude. She's eating ramen out of a Cheetos bag. Like, that is so ratchet. So, like, let me know if you guys eat a sweaty meal, bro. I know I wouldn't, bro. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck a sweetie meal, bro. All right, we're going to cut the episode here because we have been talking a lot about stuff. And, you know, I think it's a good ending point to stop on the sweetie meal. So to recap on what I said, guys, I hope everybody has a blessed 4th of July. Be safe, set off fireworks, have fun, get drunk, eat a lot of food. Have fun, bro. Have fun for the 4th. It's going to be lit. You know, just, just go outside and start blowing yourself up with fireworks, bro. Just... Hold in your hand and see what happens, bro. Play chicken with the firework fuse. You know, uh, let me know how you guys feel about Uzi's pink tape. I didn't like it that much, but hey, what is my opinion? I'm just the guy on a camera in a room on a chair talking into a microphone. So let me know about that. Let me know if you guys fuck with Big Sexy or Sexy Red and her music, Ski's Fire. Let me know how you guys think that we live in a country, America, badass, you know, recapping on what we were talking about. Let me know about aliens. I'm pretty sure aliens live and exist in this world. And uh, let me know if you guys think about that. And, uh, you know, let me know if you guys would smell Megan Thee Stallion's fart. Um, other than that, man, thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for watching. If you stay to the end, you're a real one. Thank you guys so much. Uh, shout out to all the audio listeners, shout out to the video listeners, um, shout out to everybody that's subscribing to my channel, shout out to the likes, shout out all of you guys, you guys are amazing, to the fans, you guys are awesome, bro, hopefully, uh, we're in the process of some big things, I'm trying to get a website up, uh, I would like to, oh shit, I would like to get a website up, uh, let me know if you guys want merch or anything like that, I posted a TikTok of merch I made, it's kind of like a hee hee ha ha, but, um, let me know if you guys want merch or anything like that. Let me know, bro. Like, literally, please, like, engage with me. Like, you guys can literally DM me. It's fine, and I'll probably fucking answer. If you're a fan of the show, it's fine. Uh, I don't know if I addressed this on the other episode, but if you follow Salami Talk, just don't follow it because... Uh, or if you follow the Salami Loop channel, I believe it was the account I had, uh, just... 
on Instagram. I got hacked, so don't worry about that. Just follow my main, salami.talk. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, you know, I love you all. Um, if you subscribe and hit the bell, you get more content of me. And, you know, you, my I post nonstop on Reels. And so, you know, you'll just see my face all over the place. And hopefully you, uh, you know... You know, you can comment bad shit too, bro. Like, uh, I've seen people say I have the worst podcast ever and that, uh, you know, I shouldn't have a podcast and that I'm another white guy with a podcast. And, you know, like, you know, maybe I am. Maybe I'm too late on the train. But you know what? I will literally shove this entire microphone up my ass if we get to a 1,000 subscribers. So, you know, if you're going to see a lot more of me. But, uh, yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think. Um, and I love you all. You guys are amazing. You guys make the channel. Um, like, share, subscribe. And I've had to end this on one word or one phrase. Uh, happy fourth.